There's so much talk about creativity. Uh, what is creativity to you? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think creativity is, is one of those things that... It's like a religion, you know. You can't, uh, you know, start trying to... Everyone's got their own definition of what it means. It's, a, it's one of those words, it's like, it's like faith or uh, something weird and mystical and whatever and actually it's not at all I mean it's depend you know I don't think that I don't think that we spend enough time just um, analyzing what it means I, to, to, to my, my kind of my kind of feeling about it is that it's not talent and it's not about a skill it's not about it's not just about a skill it's not about whether you can sing or play the guitar or draw or paint or um, that's just, those are skills those are craft skills that you can learn I think creativity seems to be something a little bit elusive it seems to be it seems to it seems as though there are a couple of ways in which in which people have tried to understand it one is the biographical way you look at creative people who everyone acknowledges they're brilliant and then you look at their histories and um, quite a lot of people have written books about that and trying to put together the things that those people have in common and there's a, so there's a kind of a biographical analysis of creative people and that and it and it, it's it does that analysis suggests that that uh, biography is important Biography is important. Often these people are displaced somehow. They're outsiders, or they've had some kind of. Um, a lot of them have lost parents. There's a kind of all that biographical, anecdotal stuff, which is fine. It's not all that useful because you can't choose your biography, so it's not that useful. Um, the other approach is the other approach is a kind of reductionist approach, which is about trying to measure creativity through testing. And you probably know there are a bunch of creativity tests. Now, creative creativity tests are kind of self-limiting because um, is because um, the things that you can only measure things that are measurable yeah so when you try and measure creativity you start measuring things which have nothing to do with creativity and you start measuring things like lateral thinking or how do you how do you use this um, thing in 20 different ways that's not creativity that's about lateral thinking that's a, you know it's that whole kind of de bono bullshit about using things in different ways and it's it's kind of it's kind of like it's a completely reductionist way of thinking about creativity because most of the time that just comes to solving problems yeah. and yeah some people are better at solving problems than others and usually that's got something to do with how intelligent you are and there's certain techniques that you can learn if you want to, about about um, how to think, solve problems in more interesting ways. I don't think that's creativity either. Yeah. So you know, creativity for me is when is something that that people you either you either do something amazing or you don't. People who do something amazing that people find amazing, those are creative people. The ones that don't aren't. Traditionally in Denmark, uh, the creative and non-creative and more uh, administrative type, type of students are separated. Uh, gives it, in your opinion, sense to work with creativity, innovation and entrepreneurship in the same education as we do in the I house And why or why not? I think, I think that, first of all, innovation, innovation needs some kind of practical skills. It really does. You know, if you want to innovate, it means you have to take turn, take an idea and make it into reality, and that's going to require some pretty hard skills. I think financial management is probably useful. Um, um, technology, knowledge of technology, depending what the particular field is. When it, when you're talking about innovation, you need some pretty hard skills. You need skills that 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 are measurable. That are that are, that are well taught, well well understood that can that you can and are very disciplined and they might involve processes. Um, but you need to start off with ideas and ideas can probably come from anywhere, you know. And ideas ideas are gonna come from people who 
who are obsessive about a certain domain. That's, that's you know, people are really interested in something and they want to make it happen. Sometimes they're not the best people to make it happen. So I think the idea of working with the idea of working with um, entrepreneurs or people who are, you know, got more better business brains is probably a good idea. You know, as long as as long as they understand each other's roles, then that's fine. But um, I don't think you should be teaching creativity anyway. So 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 oh. this is kind of a. But then, how can we make schools that increase the creative environment and creative skills? Well, what you can do, the only thing you can do, I think, is try to get, try to expose kids to as many different possible skills as possible, as you can. So, for example, um, these skills don't have to be about music or art or anything. They can be about Anything that is that is um, it's like um, some some kids will go through their whole lives very creative kids and they'll never find the thing that allows them to express their ideas. So the more exposure you give to them of different disciplines, the more likely a creative individual is going to find something that they really a field, a domain. Um, Ken Robinson, who, I don't know if you know him, he's written a couple of books about creativity and education, and he calls it, he calls it finding your element, like a fish is, lives in water, you know, we live in air. And creative people have to find the element that they can live in. Sometimes it might be dance, but it might be something digital, it might be, it might be woodwork, who knows, you know. And just think about all the new things that are happening now, that all we can do from an educational point of view is make sure that everybody has access to as the biggest variety of possible craft skills in the hope that that there's some sort of connection gets made between someone's passion and the element in which they want to work yes. so and that is a game of chance so what we can do the best thing we can do is increase the chances of that happening because if I go back to what I said earlier about the, the, bio, the biographies of creative people, usually it is about someone who has a particular idea and then discovers a medium in which those ideas can be expressed. Okay, so do you see what I'm saying? Is it, we need to increase the, increase the number of accidents that can happen. Yeah. By providing what I call this redundant space. In other words, space that is not subject specific. Create as much variety of experience in the hope that one or two or three out of ten or fifty or hundred will just find something that they can use to express their creativity. So you have in a school you have to have creative, innovative and entrepreneurial yeah. uh, rooms for each session you can call. Yeah, I suppose so. I think that might work. Um, Rooms. I don't know. I don't know. If, if, I don't think physical space matters very much. I think psychological space is the only thing that matters. You know. I don't think. I think access to access to resources is really important. And resources means time, play time, playing with different things. So you need lots of different things. You need lots of time. You need lots of opportunity. So probably the more diverse the environment is, the better. Um, and the more freedom there is in that environment to experiment with different things. Uh, lack of um, being able to to create psychological spaces which are free of measurement and evaluation, where experiments can happen without judgment. Those things are essential. Okay.